Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint kind of an abstract impressionist uh, landscape with some simple trees. It's going to be very, very easy, good beginner project. We're going to use some texture tools uh, to give it a little bit of texture. It'll be a lot of fun. Definitely be changing up the colors. This is just kind of our starting point on our reference photo there, but uh, we're going to be adding some blues and other colors to it. Uh, I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for our live show. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Okay, I decided to go with a little bit bigger board. I use, usually use a little bit smaller boards, but this one's a 12 by 16 inch. Uh, it's about the biggest one we can use on camera. <laughs> it's still fitted in on, on our uh, table here. Uh, this one is a Pro Linen, uh, Pro Series Belgian Linen plain air paint board. Uh, it's a nature core. They're kind of uh, recycled materials, uh, archival. Really like these. Uh, Fredericks is our canvas sponsor. They provided the canvas for today's show. I'm going to be using all kinds of different tools for this. Just a few brushes. I'm not really exactly sure which ones I'm going to need, so I just kind of grabbed a few in different sizes. I've got a number 12 bright, a number 4 filbert, a number 1 round, and then a couple of angle brushes, which I probably won't use, but uh, I've got them just in case. 3 8 inch and a quarter inch angle shader. Uh, I've got the 3 8 inch Willows Blender. The red brushes are the Velvet Touch Line in Princeton. These green ones are the Summit 6100 series. Uh, also Princeton. Princeton is our brush sponsor, so thank you to them. Um, and this one is the Deerfoot Stippler, the 3 8 inch. Um, so for some of our tree texture, possibly. Um, I'm also going to be using a sea sponge for some of the trees, po possibly. Uh, like I said, I've, I haven't done this yet, so we're just going to kind of play today and see what happens. Um, I've also got a toothbrush for some splattering. We've got a couple of uh, the Princeton Catalyst uh, mini paddles. These are the uh, number four and number two for some mixing and some um, texture that we're going to put on the background. We got the kitchen sink. <laughs> we'll be just using about, that for some. Just about. And some, I also, well, well, I'm not done. Oh, so. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> got an old credit card that I've kind of cut in place, but you can use a whole, whole size one. It's just you know, one of the ones I've used. And I, then I'm going to have some um, texture tools. These are just things that I've got around the had them around the house. So this is like a piece of shelf liner. This is a little uh, trivet pad. Uh, I think I got it at the dollar store in a multi pack. These are our, this is some like bubble wrap. Um, this is some um, uh, confetti uh, leftover from confetti um, <clears throat> punch hole punch. Somebody sent me that. So anyhow, we've got some texture tools. Just grab something. Um, you it can even be like the orange. Like, you know, the oranges come in those kind of mesh bags. You could use that. Um, just pretty much whatever you have around the house. Just grab something that's got a little bit of texture to it. That's all you're going to need. All right. Um, going to start out. And if you don't have uh, something that has texture to do this first part, you don't have to worry about that. Like, you can leave this first part out uh, and totally and get a, still get a really cool effect. I'm just going to show you what I did on mine. Something that you can do if you have some... Um, texture uh, medium. This one is a fine pumice gel from Golden. Uh, it's a little bit smoother texture than some of their other. This one is a fiber paste. It's got a little bit grittier texture. Um, that's another one that you could use for this. You could use a heavy gel medium if you have one of those. This is kind of something that you can add to uh, thinner acrylic paints to make them thicker. So um, you could even add color um, to your paint for this layer, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use scoop up my use my little spatula tool here and scoop up some of this fine pumice gel on it i've just got a little bit i don't have to have a huge amount and i'm going to just kind of scrape it across here uh right about where i want my trees to go so my tree line is going to kind of do this angle go ahead and put up the reference photo there so we can see what we're working towards there honey you can see it's kind of this long um angled field here. So I'm just going to kind of lay this down. Actually, I'm going to scrape that part off because that's a little bit too high right there. And I'm going to lay this down. Do a little bit more. I'm just kind of trying to go for a small, a smooth, but um, a small section, kind of thin layer is what I'm going for here. There's the little parts that are a little bit thicker than others. Um, and 
but I don't want to co like cover this whole area. I'm not trying to like coat the whole thing. Okay, so then I'm gonna just grab one of my texture tools. It really doesn't matter, just whichever one you want to use. And I'm going to press it down into that wet medium. It's going to create a texture on in the medium. Do it over here because it wasn't quite big enough. And I'm going to take it and press what's left of it up here. And so the part up here is going to be a lot more subtle, but there'll be just a little bit of it up there. So you'll be able to kind of see a little bit of something going on up there in the sky. I may have to zoom in for and them to see the textures. I'll hold it. Whoops. Well, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, just go ahead and stay. I'll zoom back. Stay away, stay away. Go back. Um, <laughs> and then I'm going to go back over here and while this is still wet, I'm going to just kind of shape out my hill. So I'm going to kind of scrape off the top layer. So there's a little bit of a thicker edge maybe. And then. Hey, real quick. What it, uh -huh. They want to know, could they do this with all these extra texture tools? What? Uh, say what? They want to know, can they do all this without the extra texture tools? Can they yeah, just I just, yeah, I just, uh, what do you mean with the tech? Yeah, yeah, you can do it without the texture okay, tools. Okay, right. yeah. I'm sorry. They just asked a question. No, no, yeah, I, th I said that before I started that we could leave this step, step out. Okay. Yeah, you could totally leave right. that, I'm sorry. This, this part out if you don't uh, have these. And then I'm just going to go through part of this and just kind of smooth out some of it, leaving a little bit of the um, texture in a few areas. And I want this kind of broken up. If you can kind of see where the, as I scrape, the tool kind of broke up and left um, some uneven edges. I'm gonna just scrape off what I've got left on my tool up here, just in some random places. And what'll happen is this will kind of soak into the canvas. You give it about, I did this earlier today on my other canvas. Um, give it about four hours to dry. So do this early uh, and then let it set. Don't try to blow dry it because it can kind of change the properties of it. You don't want it to buckle or warp. And especially on this board, it's not going to dry that fast because it's solid all the way through. So um, I gave it about four hours to dry. So I'm going to set that aside. And with the magic of TV, woohoo, <laughs> got the dry one. <laughs> yeah, magic of YouTube. Uh, we've got the dry one here. So this one, like I said, has been about four hours and you can see uh, it dries, the pumice gel, it dries a little bit uh, dark. You can kind of see where it's at, that's fine. The heavy gel medium will dry completely clear. So if you wanted to put paint down or mix paint in with it, it would uh, just tint it the same color as your paint. So you could have done like a dark um, layer here if you wanted to. I'm just gonna grab a number two gesso brush and so like I was saying you could you could have added the your color this color that I'm mixing up I don't, here I don't think we went over the colors oh I didn't know okay let's do that unbleached titanium titanium white quinacridone magenta cadmium yellow medium cadmium or yellow oxide phthalo green yellow shade ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. So very simple palette. And if you want to do the more earthy tones like is in the reference photo and you don't want the kind of bluer colors, just use the uh, yellows and the two uh, browns. And uh, maybe use like the ultramarine blue for the darker, um, you, the sky has a little tiny bit of a greenish tone. Same, same with down here. So we, you could use it down there um, and Uh, and then come, you know, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> just keep, just keep the green kind of light. If you're, if you're going for the, the color that's in the reference photo is what I'm saying. So, all right. So I'm going to just lay on a layer, a fairly thin layer. I mixed up some burnt umber here and some ultramarine blue. And I'm going to put this down as my first layer on my canvas. And I'm going to really work it in to all this texture. And then we're gonna put other colors on top, but what's gonna happen is when we put the other colors on top, since we have that little bit of a texture in there, it will catch on the texture and we'll have uh, really interesting effects happen. Okay, so just kind of trying to stay sort of in my 
little zone there that I created, but this is a very kind of impressionistic kind of uh, abstracted look, so it doesn't have to be perfect, and we're not going for perfection here. This is definitely not going to be like a realistic, uh, realistic landscape at all. So, and I'm just going to go ahead and grab some of my white and mix that in with whatever's left in here. And I'm just using a large chip brush here. This is number two gesso brush. I'm just going to scrape it into my background here. Just a little bit of that color. Okay, whatever's left on my brush there. All right, so let's grab this brush now. Uh, actually, I think I want to stick with this bigger brush. It's working pretty well for me. So yeah. let's go ahead and grab the unbleached titanium. Maybe a tiny bit of the pink. Oops. Oh no, that's not good. That page is moving around on me. What did you just do? Oh. Am I? Am I want, me to, want me to tape it down so you don't stick tape to your that's gloves? What I'm, that's what I'm, I'll tape it down there so it doesn't move. It's a it's a new palette sheet and I must have taken off the top oh. a lot. Okay, so I'll say hi to everybody while she's fixing her that. palette. Nope. Do you need more tape? I don't know. Let me tape it down to itself and see if that helps. There we go. Okay. Using a little tiny bit of phthalo blue here. A little bit of burnt sienna. Got several colors on my brush here. I'm gonna add some water to it to kind of get it to smooth on a little bit. And we're just gonna kind of build up whatever seems good at the time. So we're not, I'm not going into this with a really preconceived notion of exactly how I want it to look. I'm just going to kind of, I think I have sort of a color scheme in mind, maybe doing lighter colors around this bottom area here. Um, Grab some yellow here. Let's add some white to it. Use some of this yellow down here. Close to the horizon line. I'm going right over the top of that hillside there. It's fine. Okay. Let's grab some white. And I'm just going to kind of work wet into wet. So I'm going to what I'm doing with this first layer is just really trying to cover the canvas, get all of the canvas covered with paint. I'm not really too worried about the these colors being the colors that we end up with at the end, which we're going to, they're going to be fairly close. We're going to keep it fairly neutral on here. Um, but I just want to work this paint into all of these kind of cracks in my canvas. And some of these, I think I'm just going to do this because kind of adding an interesting texture. a little bit uh, de departure from some of the stuff we normally do so I kind of thought it was time to do some just well, that's cool. do something that was a little bit more free form just kind of have fun with it um, let you kind of explore paint get get a feel for it uh, try some new stuff and you get to wear rubber gloves I do yeah I would definitely recommend it because this can be messy yeah somebody was asking why she wearing rubber gloves and I was like I don't know well um, when I do the trees, when I whenever you use the sponge, it's just smart to use the rubber glove. Oh, so okay, okay. That's why I knew I was going to be using the sponge later. So oh, excellent. Used some uh, phthalo blue here with the burnt sienna. Burnt sienna mixed with phthalo blue makes this really pretty teal. It's kind of an earthy teal color. Really lovely color. So use that up there at the top. And some of that paint is still wet over here, so it's going to kind of blend with it a little bit. If it's already starting to dry too much, you can kind of, or while it's still wet and you're still working with it, you can spray your canvas. Um, and especially with this one, normally I would not recommend you doing that because what it can do is kind of lift off the previous layers. But this is, we've kind of put this on pretty quickly, and so these layers are still kind of wet and workable. And... Um, even if it does lift like it's doing over here, it's kind of going to just add some interesting texture to our undercolor here on our painting. And I don't want to lift off all of the, like blend it completely. I want it to be kind of uh, messy almost.
else. Look at how that is looking. Isn't that fun? So a little bit darker colors. Um, one, one way of doing that, uh, like if you're kind of scared to do something like this, what you could do is mix it up here on your palette and then just uh, use a spatula to uh, put the paint down on different places on your canvas. Um, so some of this blue, some of this, you know, this color over here, this color over here, and kind of strategically place kind of where you want these colors to go and then just kind of blend over them and they will mix together and you won't get as much blending as you will maybe if you picked it up with your brush. So if you kind of apply it directly onto the canvas, it's another way of um, kind of getting some of these interesting effects. So now I've just kind of gone through here. I've got the paint directly on the canvas. So all I'm having to do is kind of just push it around a little bit. And I had that other layer down. So it's, it's kind of uh, got color underneath it already. I really like this. What's happening here. So this is still wet down here. So I don't want to do anything to this yet. Um, this is kind of our first layer. I'm going to let Mark have this now. And we want to dry it completely before we continue with any more layers. So I'm going to let him take that. While we're waiting, we'll uh, say welcome. If you're new to our channel, we're so glad that you're joining us today. This is kind of a fun, different project than what we normally do. Normally I do kind of more sort of semi-realistic type stuff or a little, you know, some beginner stuff, some um, more advanced, but um, this one is definitely beginner all the way. 100% beginner. So let's go ahead and just do a simple tree on this. This is our Mark's little stick man guy that uh, he created and we kind of play with, play and add little things to him while he's blow drying just to give us something to do. So it just depends on what we're painting that day. So we'll give him some foreground here that he's standing on. Tiny little tree actually compared to the size of the door. It's definitely not uh, in perspective, but uh, I don't have room for a huge tree, so maybe this is really far away. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. So like I said, uh, if you if you don't have the texture mediums, you could have just started the way I did with that paint layer. So you could have just started with your paint, done that. Um, if you have heavy body acrylics that you're using, um, they're already kind of have that texture. So you could just put them on really thick and um, you could still do the impression, uh, use the impression tools uh, in that thick paint and it'll still kind of make those impressions in the paint. In fact, I could have I done that while it was wet. I didn't think about it. Um, but uh, that's just something that you can do. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually make impressions uh, or like stamp onto our um, dried canvas. So um, if you have stamping tools, uh, you could use those. Like if you've, you know, if you've got a stamp collection like I do that I never use anymore. Um, I used to use it for scrapbooking, but uh, you could pull out some of those stamps and kind of do a few of those if you wanted to. Um, when I do my kids' classes, I, I did that I'm pretty often. Sure it's still a little wet, the gloppy part. Okay, yeah, I need it going. completely dry. Yeah, I do. Um, so what we're going to do is paint directly onto this, just like we would use ink a stamp. Um, we'll paint onto our um, texture materials here. And then, oh, I didn't turn my phone off. Let me see if I can do that right now. No sound. Um, and that it'll stamp onto our canvas just like it would. Sorry about the delay here. Let's go ahead and while he's doing that, we'll mix up some colors. So I'm going to make kind of a purpley color because I want a kind of purpley gray. So I'm going to go ahead and add a lot of brown to my um, magenta there. That's almost equal parts, burnt umber and magenta. And then I'm going to grab some of the blue. And that'll make kind of a deep maroon purpley color. So we use a little bit of that. We'll probably add a lot of white to it, obviously, to kind of tone it down. But it, you, if you want to see kind of the what it's going to look like, you can just kind of uh, 
mix a little bit of white into it and you can kind of tell this is going to be kind of the color we we end up with a which is a, a really pretty color so i think i'm going to use that uh, on some of my stamping tools just on some areas just for a little bit of a subtle subtle color most of our color is going to be just those kind of neutral tans and beiges and grays but every now and then i want to add just a pop of color so that there's something going on um, back there but it's not going to be really um, obvious or you can make it obvious if you want to it's up to you it's your painting so that's the fun of this kind of painting so I'm going to mix up a lot of my gray it's the ultramarine blue and burnt umber and I'm going to try not to get it in my white because I want to keep it very dark for our tree keep the, the trunk of our tree so this is instead of black you could use black if you want it even darker but we're going to kind of use this color I think and then I will use a little bit of it over here pull some white and mix more of this gray there we go Mark is having a hard time getting that dry that kind of canvas those those uh, canvas panels and canvases that are boards like that that are solid all the way through um, they're better for mixed media work like this so it's actually uh, works really nicely for um, these kind of scraping and things that we're going to be doing on it uh, it would be much more difficult to do this on a bouncy canvas you know a regular canvas uh, that was if you have like a regular canvas that you're going to be using um, just put like a book or something stable underneath the um, part of the canvas that is uh, if I have a I don't have one that's but you know what I mean like the underside of your canvas has uh, is just stretched canvas over the top there's a kind of an empty space between the wood um, just put like a book or something like that underneath your canvas so that you have a nice solid surface to work on when you're doing this because you do not want your canvas bouncing around when you're uh, trying to do these kind of textured effects it'll be really frustrating okay so this one I mixed up I still had a little bit of gray on my brush or on my um, knife here but I've just mixed up some of the unbleached titanium with the burnt sienna for really pretty brown great right, perfect right there. be careful okay touch you touched it, it. Get a little bit on my finger uh-oh he's got it okay <laughs> and I don't have a glove on uh-oh that's all right I think you'll survive no glove and I got some paint on my finger so <laughs> I'm gonna put out some more paint we're definitely using a lot more paint on this just because we're we are doing these kind of thicker textured um, effects put out some more burnt or unbleached titanium and more titanium white and more burnt umber I think that'll get us through Actually, let me put out some more burnt sienna too. Because we're going to need some more of that for our tree. Okay, so you can see how it dried actually kind of darker than we had um, uh, when we first put it on. That's normal. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and use a smaller brush now. I'll put away my big, you know, just want to get a little water on it to set it aside. I don't want to pollute my water jar with all of that paint you might stop for a minute and just wash that out wash it away. Uh, no it's fine It'll, it's it's old it's already kind of messed up anyways all right so let's mix up a little bit of sounds like me green <laughs> old and messed up yeah but you still want to wash me once in a while <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> <laughs> good point thanks all right, so I used um, ultramarine blue with my cadmium yellow medium. That gives me this kind of beautiful olive green. I kind of mixed it with this teal that was already down here on our canvas from the sky. And I'm just going to now run my brush sideways through. You can see all this texture coming through now. This is why we did that texture. I'm just barely skimming it across the canvas here. What it's doing is just catching on the top layer. 
leaving that dark color underneath showing really cool okay let's grab some brown mix it with that green do some brown parts a little bit darker you're whispering sorry <laughs> I, I have a bad habit of doing that so I'm assuming you said hi to everybody while I was out. I did. Yeah. I, and I, said hi. I didn't ask them. I don't know if I asked them to subscribe. I can't remember. Okay. I mean, you did a stick man, I see. I did okay, stick all the man. important parts are done, so the video can end at any time. <laughs> and it's complete. <laughs> so we did stick man. Yes. I did mention that he was your kind of idea, your mascot. I'm adding a little bit more of that dark color right here. This is going to be where our trees go. And there's a little bit of a shadow down here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that color. Let's grab some of this kind of ooh, pink color. That's kind of pretty. I'm just doing these all kind of random. Letting it sort of skim. Not trying to blend every, anything in really. Just... So that I have all these kind of different colors going on here, but not really pressing down too hard so that I am going to have this raised area here where I'm seeing the, let's grab the yellow oxide and some of that up here. I want to see that dark color peeking through in those cracks, so I don't want to press down too hard at any point here. All right, I think that's going to be pretty good. Let's use a little bit of these colors up in our sky just to kind of um, pull these colors up. Maybe add some white so that they're lightened. But I'm just going to do the same kind of thing and just scrape some of this color on. And it's also going to catch on the texture here that's in our sky. We have all this texture up there, right? Just a little bit, not as much as down here, but you can still kind of see it up there. So I'm just going to kind of pick a few places to run this brush across so that I can kind of catch the texture of the canvas. And I had that green in there. So it kind of scraped a little bit of that up there in the sky. All right, that's good enough. I don't want to. I don't want to turn my sky green. I want to leave these other colors on there. So let's go ahead and do what we were talking about earlier, and let's use our tool here and let's see what color I want to use. Let's use this kind of rosy color, maybe a little bit of our gray, and I'm going to use the. bubble wrap and just kind of brush it on very lightly and we're just going to kind of find a couple spots too and I'm barely touching it down I'm just going to leave these kind of textured spots in our sky this is super fun to do with kids they really get into this so if you have kids around and you want a project to do with them over Thanksgiving break pull out a couple of canvases, grab some of these texture tools and do something like this with them, they'll have a blast. Okay, some other, go ahead and use a little bit of this down here. Down here, I think I'm gonna use some lighter color. There we go. And you don't have to, you know, you don't have to do this. Like this is really your project. You can do as much or as little of this as you want. So it doesn't have to look like mine. You don't have to do any of this. If you don't like it, just don't do not do it. I'm going to suggest that if people who are watching live mm -hmm. haven't already, make sure their video settings are on 1080p because the texture is really coming through nicely. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, good. In that video. So sometimes YouTube will be a lower setting. That's just true. Check it and set it to the highest setting you can so you can see all the texture and Sweet. what Angel is doing. All right, I am going to scrape up some of these colors. I'm going to have lots of different colors on here. 
I'm just going to find a spot and I'm going to scrape across the sky here. Don't worry about going over your texture. In fact, we want to go over the texture because, or the these, you know, these spots and things, because we don't want it to be so obvious. You know, we kind of want the more layers we add to this, the more interesting it gets. Because then you're kind of like, oh, is that little dots that I'm seeing down there? And then, you know, if you're doing these kind of layers, scra scraping layers over the top, then it becomes a little bit more mysterious. It's like, oh, you can see it, but it's just barely kind of in there. I'm gonna grab some white. I'm gonna do some white. Ooh, that's pretty. You got an art question? Yes. Somebody would like to know if interference paint would work Ooh, good yeah. in this. That would be cool. Yeah, interference paint is just kind of an iridescent paint that changes color depending on, you know, uh, and I'm kind of creating some texture there too with this tool. Scraping back through that, that paint. I think it's a 10 yard penalty for interference. So <laughs> just be mindful of, of your field position. <laughs> really? Okay. Well. well, just trying to help people out. <laughs> You're very helpful. Thank you. Okay, let's add. I just want some blue. Some. Another art, art question. Mm -hmm. They said that they have Payne's Gray, so would that oh, work? Oh yeah, instead? Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is very similar to this gray that I mixed, uh, except for it's ultramarine blue plus black. So instead of using burnt umber, um, it's a little bit darker, uh, more obvious. I actually used, uh, I did a comparisons of black in the black and white floral that I did. A while back, um, you know, the poppies that were black and white floral. So if you want to kind of see the difference between all of the different blacks. Uh, and I think I used my brown, too. I'm not sure where my notebook is that had that in there, but it was pretty interesting. Okay, so just use this. I didn't have it. You see how I kind of left these streaks in it when I mixed it? I did that intentionally. I didn't try to, like, get a smooth blend. And that way I get these kind of streaks when I put it onto my canvas, too. So it's got all this really interesting stuff going on. And I'm just using the edge of my knife here. I have all these colors happening on it because I've kind of been mixing. So it's it's grabbed some of that darker blue. In fact, I really like that. So I think I'm going to grab a little bit on, on here. Intentionally put some of this, grab some of that black. Very, very minimal. Ooh, that's neat. It's these little bits of contrast that will really make this kind of a painting interesting, even more interesting. So don't be afraid of like having some of these areas in here that are kind of like, what is that? Um, this is really fun. Yeah, there was somebody who posted in your Facebook group today with the blue poppies and their comment was it's hard to let go but i'm having fun yeah oh i like that and so yep, yeah that's exactly know, this this is definitely one of those paintings where you definitely have to kind of just let go let it happen let it develop um all right i think i'm happy with that so what i'm gonna do is I really do need to dry this one more time, but I know it's going to take forever. I wish I had like a third picture of this. That and was like a stick man you can keep just painting on. Huh? Just keep painting on stick man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Um, well, I need to do some color down here too. I'm going to grab the white here and I'm going to do some white down low. have kind of like this line between this texture and this texture where I kind of started. So I've added a little bit of white water to my paint here. It's a little bit fluid. And what people can't see off camera is that because of the lights in the studio, you're kind of tilting and looking from one angle and to right. the other angle so you're yes. trying to see how it looks from you're not just looking at it straight on you're right right and that helps and then using this kind of watered down paint here 
thinned out some white here. I still have, you know, this blue right close, so it's picking up a little bit of blue, a little bit of that yellow. And I'm just going to kind of go over some of these areas and add this fluid paint over. What that'll do is kind of soften some of the edges of the thick paint. It'll pick up a little bit if it's still drying. Sometimes it might actually kind of grab that paint and pull it off the canvas, which we are trying not to do on other paintings, but on this one is going to add even more interesting kind of things. So I'm not too worried about that if, you know, if I, if that painting underneath is starting to dry and, um, well, let's go ahead and splatter too while we're at it. Oh yeah. Let's Hashtag splatter. <laughs> let's see what color we want. Let's splatter with this kind of crimson purple thing that we've got going on here. This will be an interesting splatter color because it won't overwhelm our painting, but it'll give us a little something special. And I've mixed it in with this kind of gray white that I had over here. So it's not the really deep color. And I mixed that while Mark was blow drying. So it's you can even get a lot of paint on your brush, kind of scoop it up and drip it. Do you want bigger splatters? Okay. Fun. All right. Nice. And then I'm going to use my sponge to just kind of dab that off in a couple places. Just to kind of blend it in. Maybe some of them I'll leave solid, but other places I'll kind of sop it up. All right, I definitely need you to dry that because I don't want to do any more. I, the more layers I add to it, the more it'll pick up the under colors. So I don't want to lose what I've already done there. So, but we're going to try to do, and I'll do it on this one because this one's dry enough up here to kind of um, show you what I'm thinking of doing. And I'll test it on this to see if it actually works. Although the background here doesn't have paint on it, but we'll see. So what I'm thinking of doing is going in and wetting the background of where I want my trees to go. But not where the trunks are, because I don't want the trunks to, to do this. I, want, I just want kind of the area where the trees are going to be. And I'm going to grab my burnt umber. That'll be our first background color. I'm going to add some water to it with my sponge. So it's kind of a fluid, not super wet, but a little bit wet. So it'll help it kind of move around the canvas a little bit. You can see how I have way too much water in my, <laughs> my sponge there. So kind of squeeze it out. Just make sure you don't have it super sopping wet. Now what I'm going to do is splatter, do the you see how it's kind of grabbing that and pulling it out? That, wa that water underneath is going to kind of give the tree much softer edges. Yeah, I really like that. That's going to work well. Let's see what happens when I put thicker paint on there. So let's grab some of this burnt sienna and put that on there. It's kind of lifting off a little bit of that first layer. So I'll have to be careful about that. Let's add some yellow. So the thicker paint's definitely not going to spread as much as the darker brown did. I need to, uh, I don't know if you can see what, uh, what that's doing though. It's definitely spreading it out. All right, so I need to clean my my sponge out so that when I use it on my other palette, my other canvas, it'll work. Let's put out some more burnt umber. Now you can see why I put on the gloves. <laughs> we need lots of gloves, lots of, lots of paper towels. Okay, so I'm gonna put a lot of that burnt umber on there because that'll be 
Our trees are quite dark. And I'm going to just go ahead and stop up some of this color here with my paper towel so it's not, it doesn't go everywhere. And if you don't have a sponge, you can actually use a uh, paper towel to, you can get kind of interesting textures with a paper towel um, that are similar to a um, sponge. So you can kind of see how, uh, how similar that looks. So don't feel like you have to, you know, you can't do this project if you don't have a sponge. You can uh, cut up a kitchen sponge. Uh, what you want, if you're gonna use it like a kitchen sponge, you wanna pull the texture off instead of cut it because you'll just get a straight line if you cut it. But if you kind of pull apart and pick apart your, your kitchen sponge, you can get something similar. It won't be exactly the same, but um, it'll be close enough. So, all right, I think he's done. So put this aside. And what I can do, since this is all wet, and if I want to use this later, I'm just going to do like this and just kind of rub it in. Now you can really see that texture that I was doing up there at the top. See how all of that caught? So we're going to do this actually on our canvas too. That's why I had him dry it. So I tried to do that while that paint was wet. It would just lift off, you know, it would smush the paint around. But uh, let's go ahead and do that actually while I've got this on this paper towel. I'm going to smush it around. Just add a layer of kind of glaze. It's going to catch down in our texture. Get down in the cracks of our canvas. I'm just going to work it in. Back and forth. Okay. Okay, one more drying, then it's over time. <laughs> According to the union rules. One more drying. Yeah. <laughs> it's over the, time. The, the first two are you part of it. You see what that did? It kind of unified it, sort of uh, softened everything up <laughs> according to the rules, huh? Okay. I did well, not well, know that's, I was That's what under, the union says. So the, the first two are included here. in the labor. Okay. All right. All right. I'll keep that in mind. So I'm doing the kind of gray down here because this part is a little bit darker. And I'm going to do the gray around the sides too. Just kind of give it sort of a vignette where it's a little bit darker around the sides. And this is just my paper towel that's kind of wet down. Ooh, look how nice that looks up in that corner. There we go. So to be very honest, mm -hmm. <clears throat> this seems like it's a good base for like almost any kind of painting. I think so, yeah. Really, and it could be any size if you want to do it square or mm -hmm. on a long canvas or, you know, uh, multiple canvases, you know. Mm -hmm. They're all going to kind of look different, too. You know, the more texture and the more layers you add, the more you're just going to get all kinds of fun things happening. So, all Like right. if you put a tank in there, it would be perfect. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get crazy. <laughs> Did you mute? What? Did you mute her who shall not be named? No, I did not. Let me do that right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Alexa, she decided to talk to us during the last show. She had stuff to say. All right, so I'm laying down that water like I did before. Just kind of in this area. It's kind of the size of a fist, maybe. That's where I want to put my trees. I might even put them a little bit closer to this edge. So I'm just going to wet that down. Not sopping wet, but you want it wet enough that it's not going to dry on you as soon as you go to get your paint on there, you know. All right, so let's grab the burnt umber, and I've got my sea sponge here. If you have, like, a fluid acrylic, this might be a good one to use for that because it will actually kind of help spread a little bit faster, I think. I'm going to use the dark gray and that burnt umber here. And the water is actually kind of diluting the strength of the paint, too, so it's not going to go on as thick, too. So I'm going to just kind of do some little tree shapes. I've got two trees that are kind of stuck, stuck together here. So I'm going to do the, leave a little space at the bottom. I 
This one in the front side is a little taller. And I do want it dark enough so that I'm not going to see the sky through too much. So I do want to get it fairly dark right there. And then I'm going to just kind of turn my sponge to get a smaller section and squeeze it. Grab some of that burnt sienna. Do some of that in here. Leaving the dark, darker area kind of at the bottom and uh, doing the lighter colors kind of on these sides over here where the sun might be hitting it. And then find another spot if I can. And I'm just kind of squeezing it so I have like a small area to work with. Dabbing in that. Yellow oxide. And a little bit on that tree. And that's pretty much all I need to do for those trees. And then I'm going to use my, if I can find it, without getting my hands all, I'm going to try to wipe my hands off. Because I'm going to get my brushes all, my brush handles all messed up. Got to wipe your gloves off? <laughs> yeah, wipe my gloves off. So which brush did you grab? I grabbed the number one round. And I'm going to do the tree trunks with this. So I'm just going to bring them down to this level here. Keep them kind of thin. And actually there's three in my picture, but I think I'm just going to do two. We'll see. Well, actually three is probably... There's kind of an odd number, right? Isn't that fun? This looks like one of those pictures that you would see kind of in a doctor's office. I've seen, you know, <laughs> I mean, you have seen a lot of these kind of <laughs> paintings in, you know, waiting rooms and things or, you know. Or, you know, like uh, Kirkland's or, you know, one of those kind of home decor places that, you know, sells kind of contemporary art. There's a lot of these kind of sort of impressionist style. What? What are you laughing at? Okay. I'll, I'll tell you after the show. Going in and adding little dark spots underneath you know, and around just to make sure that the tree trunks kind of split off up into that tree there and disappear. So if it's not dark enough and you're seeing the tree trunks, just add a little bit more of your dark or you can kind of add a few, you know, limbs if you want to in there. But really for our purposes, I'm just going to kind of do the tree trunk and let it kind of dissolve into the background. And then I'm going to use the edge of the brush just a little bit of paint here, and I'm just going to scribble, scribble, and that's really what I'm doing, scribble, 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 sideways on my canvas here to scrub some of that dark there in that shadow area. Okay, now it's just a matter of adding whatever else we want to add um, to it to kind of finish it off. So I think I'm gonna add some more white up here because it kind of got dark uh, with our layer that we added. And also add some of this yellow oxide over here onto the hill to kind of make it more golden. So I've added white with the yellow oxide here to kind of add a highlight side of our hill. The light's coming in here, hitting our trees. So we can add a little bit of that to our trees too if we want. So I'm going to actually use the Deerfoot Stippler for that. I'm just going to pull off some color onto my Deerfoot Stippler and just stipple. The, that water effect didn't really do what I wanted it to do, but that's all right. We're just going to kind of, it didn't really pull the color out too much, as much as I had hoped it would. I think there was just too much canvas, too much texture and things happening on the canvas. But I, on a smoother canvas, I think that that, that, te that effect that we did with the water would actually be pretty cool. I think I'm going to try it again on something else, another project. All right. So I added a little bit of that color. My dear foot stippler. And definitely not going to need either, though, any of those. <laughs> so, did you talk about your Patreon group? Um, no, I 
I haven't actually. We're about to start a new project in there with my Facebook Patreon group, the $10 level. They're voting right now on what they want to paint this month. So I'm going to use this Deerfoot stippler and I'm going to just use it with some burnt sienna here and add some burnt sienna down here. Oh, that's really pretty down there. That reddish tone pulls that color from the trees down in here. Um, yeah, we do all kinds of fun stuff in that group and they get free critiques. So if you're working on whatever, you know, whatever it is you're working on, uh, you can post it in there and get critiques and, um, that's at the $10 level. At the $10 level. At the $5 level, we do a bonus video every month. We haven't picked our bonus video for November yet, but we're... You're, you're not very good at this. Voting what? So $1 level is traceables. Traceables, right. $5 level, traceables, plus access to a bonus video each month. Right. And then $10 level, traceables, bonus video, and a special Facebook group. Right. That's it. Okay. What and you said. The link down below. And I flashed it up on the screen. And if you're a paint party there. store, I have a $25 level for paint parties. So oh, nice. you can use the tutorials in your lessons and uh, license them for a small monthly fee. All right. So let's add some more stuff. Tank. I love how this is looking. I hope you guys are liking this too. Oh, yeah. They're loving this it. This is really fun. There's plenty of room for a tank right there. Yeah. Just to Do the left big of the old trees. tank right here. Mm -hmm. I think or you're right. Or two. Good, good, two. All right. I'm going to use my scrap scraper here scrappy tool scraper um i didn't use this but i don't think i'm going to i don't want any more texture you can really see you can barely see our little our little dots and that's where the way we want it if you do it too obvious it just looks like i don't know i just don't like the look of it if you if you if you leave it too well i don't know but it's up to you if you liked it you know when those dots were more obvious and leave them more obvious but i'm going to use this and i'm going to use the white and i'm going to scrape through here and create some that's what uh emerald would say is bam textures that's all i'm saying like some windblown clouds or something happening up here. And I'm going to spray it. And I'm going to blot it. That will soften that up, kind of push it down into the canvas. We still can kind of see that texture, but it'll it won't be as as harsh. That white was pretty harsh against there, so spritzing it will kind of help it meld down into our canvas a little bit easier. There we go. Love it. All right, and then to finish, I'm going to add a couple little birds if you want to the sky. So I'm going to just use this dark black brown color we have over here, this ultramarine blue and burnt umber color, and add a few little birds in our sky. Kind of really small. Kind of an M shape and then just kind of a, like a, a little fanned out tail and a little triangle for the beak. And honestly, you do not have to do this if you don't want little birds in your Yours. I don't know if I'm liking the birds actually. I think I'm just gonna get rid of that. And maybe leave that one. Just a few tiny little birds in there. Keep them pretty, pretty.
pretty soft because I, I felt like they were kind of, if I did them too too detailed, then it didn't, it didn't kind of fit with the rest of the painting. So I'm kind of trying to keep them pretty, pretty soft. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add some of this yellow with the white. Let's go ahead and Now, uh, which which level of Patreon gets a high res photos of five dollar five dollar level mm -hmm. and above? Yes, because high res photos of the project along with the bonus videos. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I use mine for my screensaver on my phone all the time, so it makes a really fun screensaver. So you're welcome to do that. Um, just don't make uh, sell prints off of them. That's pretty much the only rule. But. Uh, they're yours to use for reference. You can use them as screensavers on your phone or tab or tablet or computer. Um, and okay, I'm gonna use some of this teal color. I'm just gonna add just a little bit of it to my tree here. I feel like just a little bit in my tree. I'm gonna say hi to all the new really people. There's a bunch of new names in chat tonight. Really? Awesome. Yes. So just say welcome. Thanks for joining us. Using that burnt sienna kind of mixture over here. What? Uh, one of the good things to do is yes. I'm sorry, I kept talking, but yes, thank yeah, you. Welcome. Yeah, you're just like really painting. happy to. You're in the zone. I am in the zone. <laughs> I do that. Sorry. <laughs> um, adding the colors that are in uh, the foreground into the sky very subtly. Um, it really uh, helps tie your painting together. I'm going to add some black, darker brown up in here just to kind of help shape out my tree. Bring that out down low, out to the side a little bit. And... Up the corners of this, some of that burnt umber. If you put too much down, you can just take a cloth, wet it down, and use your cloth to kind of wipe off little areas. Okay, they want right, to. I think we're. Well, wet. they want to know how did you get that purple that's on your palette right now? I think we mixed really wet. the burnt umber and quinacridone magenta in equal parts. And then we added uh, about, well, just a little bit of the ultramarine blue. So, and that uh, created that deep purple color. All right. Well, let's right, get gonna, out of here. What? Let's get out of here. Yeah, I'm going to call this good. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hope you try it. It's super fun, super easy. Uh, lots of all kinds of uh, really cool ways that you could go with this and do different things. Um, I think one last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit more of the darker blue before I go, just one I last time. I thought it was too good to be true. You know, I, 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 you knew, just, I, you knew I that was fell, coming. I fell for it. I know. Sorry. I'm going to use that the was burnt the umber thing. and burnt, or uh, I'm sorry, the yellow blue and burnt sienna here. And I'm going to use a watered down brush. I'm going to get some more of the yellow blue here. Use my paper towel, get some water in it, and just rub it in. Just felt like it just needed a little bit more of that darker blue up there. Up high. Yeah. Feel free to stop at any point, though, oh, yeah, that you're it. happy with it. You know, that's... Uh, fun thing about this kind of you, painting. Could you add like a dark orange or yellow to give it more of a sunset oh, yeah. look? Oh, stuff? absolutely. Yeah. 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 Really bright. Um, brighter colors. If you didn't want to go with these kind of neutral palette, you could use brighter oranges and yellows in your sunset and and get uh, all kinds of really fun stuff down here. You know, I think that that would be really pretty. Okay. I think that that's better. I just kind of felt like it was 
too much of all the same color all the way up to the top. So, since we're at the end, nice. Speaking of yellow, I think I will do that. So Just while she does bit. that, yep, we'll acknowledge our super chat donor tonight, and this one was from Maureen, and she says this is an awesome project. Angela and Mark are the highlights of my Tuesday evenings. Aww. Thank you, Maureen. That's pretty wow. cool. That is. Man, the smile I just that got makes, from Angela there. <laughs> makes me was, feel good. <laughs> was awesome. Oh, I, I do like that little pop of yellow in there. We just kind of put a little bit on the paper towel there and wiped it on there. Yeah, that looks really nice. And if we get to the end and you decide, you know, you, it was, uh, I think I'm going to add just one more layer of that white. Right up top. She can't stop people. Can't She's stop. out of control. Well, <laughs> no, it's I'm, fun. I I'm mean, it's roll it the credits really... here in a second. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to just put it a little bit up into that dark area where we just were at. Just to give it a little bit of contrast up there. It was just like really dark. And it's all these layers that really make it something special so don't be afraid of trying new things doing different things oh I don't know what I just did there I kind of touched up my I must have grabbed done something there but the key is is the techniques and is the having fun letting go yes very abstract -y. I scraped it try different different tools and utensils and just yes. see what you come up with you yeah. know, don't restrict yourself to a to a brush and a canvas exactly just have fun Yep. And if you don't like something, paint over it. It's just paint, so it's easy fix. All right, I think we're done. Thanks, guys, so much. Have a great Tuesday, rest of your Tuesday night. We'll see you on Saturday. We'll be back for, uh, what are we doing on Saturday? Oh, we're doing a little black face Jeep with the kind of uh, uh, you know, autumn field in the background. It'll be a really fun. Holy sheep. Yeah. He's really cute. He's I will super say, cute. He's cute. Yeah. Yeah, and okay. it's going to be easy, too. I'm going to simplify him. He doesn't, he's not even going to really have a eyes. He's just going to be a big, you know, black face with those, some little squigglies for the body. It's going to be really fun. So, all right, guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.